Hello, welcome to our weekly devotions at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. I'm Pastor David Chubb. I'm glad you're here with me. We've been talking about power and what that means both in the world and what it means to God. And today we start by reading from the 13th chapter of John's Gospel. A lot of you might have heard it read on Monday, Thursday. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord... Are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he washed their feet, had put on a robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Servants. Who wants to be a servant? Servants get some of the dirtiest jobs that there are. And the historic task of the servant has been to do the work of carrying out the trash, laundering the soiled linen, cleaning the toilets, and here washing the feet of guests who came off the dusty road. This was an act of hospitality the master offered, but always put it into the hands of the servants. We may recognize the necessity of such vocations, but we do not covet them for ourselves. But Jesus says this is the most important stuff of all. You will never understand the power of God, the power that makes a difference, if you cannot learn to serve. Martin Luther King Jr. said, everybody can be great because everyone can serve. We have trouble with that. Greatness, service, they don't seem to go together. We don't usually equate greatness with being a servant, but maybe we should. A very simple but striking illustration serves as a challenge to discipleship. An artist had drawn a picture of two bowls with water in each. He explained that these two different bowls were found in the Passion Story. The first bowl was the one used by Pilate when he washed his hands of the responsibility of sending an innocent man to his death. The other was the larger bowl of water used by Jesus to wash the feet of his disciples at the Last Supper, whereby he reminded his followers to be humble and willing to serve one another. The artist then asked, which bowl of water are you going to use? the one in which you wash your hands of the responsibility or the one where you accept responsibility as a disciple and give yourself in service to others. Jesus says this is the true power we have. I found this story a while ago. The woman in the nursing facility had Alzheimer's. All she would say to the few who spoke to her was, my feet hurt. It didn't matter which nurse aide took care of her, the comment was always the same. My feet hurt. The caregivers always looked at her feet, rubbed them, put her slippers back on, and went on to other patients. One morning, Anna, 
uh, parish visitor for her church was making her weekly visit, and she made her way down the hall. She heard the woman chanting, my feet hurt, over and over again. She went into the room, took note of the woman's condition, and left. Going to the nurse's station, she asked if she might have a basin. She went back to the woman's room, drew some warm water in the basin, and knelt down in front of her. Slowly, so as not to frighten her, she removed her slippers and socks as she smiled and stroked her feet. Then she carefully placed one foot in the basin, washed, dried it, followed with her other foot. She completed the task. The woman watched her closely as she put her slippers and socks back on her feet. Anna rose and emptied the basin in the sink. She went to the woman, put her arms around her shoulders, kissed her forehead and said, I love you and God loves you and me. Anna finished her rounds, and as she left, an aide asked her, what in the world did you do for my patient? This is the first time she didn't complain that her feet hurt. She answered the aide, all I did was wash her feet. That's true power. The power to open a life and change a path. And it's a power that can only be found in serving those who surround you. Jesus served because in love, he was a servant. True love creates servants. Jesus couldn't do anything else. That's what it meant for him to be a teacher and a master, was to serve. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. May we become the power of Christ in the world by serving and caring for one another, because only then is there hope for new life. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. In our lives, Lord, help us to follow the example of Jesus and choose the way of a servant. There is no greater power. There is no greater station in life. Amen. May you seize and embrace the opportunities to serve so that the power of God can work through you. Have a good week.